the Elite League season is 73 games long. Spread over roughly seven months, that's around 212 days or 5,088 hours. Put that all together and you get a story. A story of how two seasons ago, Ben Davies was part of the Coventry Blaze lineup. Now, he is a key player in Guildford's and the 28-year-old they call Benny is just getting started. Join us as we follow Ben and the unusual world of pro hockey and go behind the locker room door in this month's My Legacy. On an unusual warm start to February, Flames forward Ben Davies is on his way to the rink to face a familiar team, none other than his former club, the Glasgow Clan. In the Flames locker room, everyone approaches their game differently. But Ben likes to start his off in a typically British way. Um, we have to be here, I think it's two hours before. Right, I'll get here a little bit earlier, as, as most of the guys do, just to make sure my kit's ready and, and i got my own routine. So I'd, uh, I'd come in, I'd put a kettle on pretty much straight away and uh, get that cup of tea ready and a few biscuits. Only, only, only one or two, but I need, I need those. And then uh, I would uh, start looking at my sticks, see if they needed taping, which often they do, especially if we've had a game the day before. So I'll get them ready and, and literally just make sure all my kit's ready to go. My skates don't need sharpening. Um, all my kit's fully functional. So that, that'll take me up to uh, when I need to start warming up, really, whether we have uh, some video or, or a team meeting first. Um, obviously catch up with all the boys um, and then I would move on to my warm-up so my warm-up routine kind of uh, entails more static stretching early on for maybe 20-30 minutes and uh, I got about a 10 minute routine where I do some dynamic warm-up where um, yeah try and get my feet moving a little bit more try and get my heart rate up just a little bit um, I don't stress out about it but try and obviously it, the, it was a slower pace to start with and then go into my dynamic stuff like I say and then give it about 10 minutes maybe 15 to, to throw my kit on I leave it a little late some of the guys are pretty much dressed by that point but I like just throwing it on and, and getting out there so I put my headphones in and and uh, yeah get get to that and then obviously we jump on the ice um, I don't really as one comes to putting a kit on I don't really have a a routine of left and right too much. I kind of, if I'm playing well, I try and stick with what I'm doing. If if I didn't play well the game before, say I, I maybe try and mix one or two little things up. And yeah, we just go on the ice for warm up. I, I try and be pretty loose and make sure I'm in the game mentally, and and then go from there. The week ahead is a busy one, as the schedule will see the Flames face Glasgow back to back, and a busy weekend ahead means the right pre-game meal is essential. Pretty religiously try and have porridge for breakfast. Um, I, I got a little recipe where I, I got a banana protein and I throw that in the mix and, and then mix it up with like almond butter or peanut butter. And I always try to have that in the morning, whether whenever I wake up, whether that be real early or, or a little more of a lie-in. And then when it comes to lunch, I try again to Mix it up a little bit, but always have like the carb base, sort of whether that's like rice or pasta, and then like a meat and mixing a sauce. I'm not too religious about like the same meal every week. Um, there are a couple of favorites of mine, which would be like, a, I think I make quite a good salmon risotto right now. Just about an hour before the puck drops, Davies and his teammates take part in a hockey tradition and pre-game ritual called Two Touch. Yeah, so so Two Touch is a, is a game that I think all all hockey teams maybe play as a, as a warm up, uh, kind of just to loosen you up, I guess, and uh, get get your head away from hockey a little bit maybe. But uh, it is you're just playing with a football and you're only allowed two touches. You can't take the one. Um, and it just goes around until either you take three touches or you just can't keep it going. Uh, so sometimes there's an argument of who's out. So there's sometimes a playoff between the two people. It gets, it gets a little heated, but it's, uh, it's all fun and games. Um, 
yeah, it's definitely a good aspect of of warming up and team ca team characters and, and and so on. So on our team this year, we've got we've got I would say two two guys that are, are standouts, uh, being the better players. Um, I'm sure everyone would agree with me there. That it's probably Jez London and uh, and Lindy. Um, so they're the, they're the two that are pretty much always round the final and. Uh, and then we got some, we got a couple of bad players on our team this year as well. But I'd say one is probably Richie, the young guy, and uh, definitely Mike Will. He's uh, he's tall, so you can't really put it all on him. But he doesn't have the skill set, that's for sure. <laughs> but he'd like to think he does. At two touch, um, in two touch, Ben's uh, one of the players that everyone loves to hate. He uh, he's kind of a dirty player out there. <laughs> he um, he's always controversial. He's always complaining about every little call um, him and Mike will are probably the two guys that if the guys could you know vote someone off the island they'd vote them off <laughs> so uh, but he's got that that uh, football background that none of us have so he's, he's probably a good player too with around 40 minutes until game time the pads and uniforms are put on and the team gets ready for warm-up the warm-up allows the fans to see the team for the first time on the ice and the players a last chance to loosen up before the game. Ben's mentality towards a game is what stands out the most. He's one of the league's hardest working players and his ability to slot into many different on-ice circumstances, including special teams, is what makes him a key player for the Flames over the last two seasons. The first time Davies stepped into the Flames dressing room was a little over a year ago, when he was acquired from the Coventry Blaze. And the Welshman impressed from the first game, as he iced in all 66 League, Challenge Cup and playoff games last season, picking up 16 goals and a total of 30 points in his first campaign for the league's new boys. And things are looking good again this season, as Davies is on target, having iced all 54 games and picking up 14 goals along the way. The 28-year-old was also awarded Player of the Week in Week 21 by the EIHA. Yeah, I moved from Coventry, uh, what was it, two years ago now, moved into Guildford and Guildford would have just moved up to the Elite League. so. Uh, didn't really know too much what to expect. Obviously, I'd played against Guildford and, and been around Guildford a little bit in, in the EPL, the lower league. But I uh, spoke to Digger, the coach, and, and he said how he was putting the team together. And, and it all seemed pretty promising. It was uh, not too far away from, from home in Cardiff. And uh, yeah, so I decided, uh, me, me and my girlfriend decided to move here. And uh, we, we, we like it. We like it so far. It's a, it's a nice small town and, and everyone who comes to the hockey, they're big fans and, and we got a good support. Uh, the town's good and, and we from, eat from uh, right from the off. We've had a, like a close-knit team in the changing room. So uh, we, we've had quite a few players that know each other from the past and, and uh, yeah, everyone seems to get on really well and, and we all play for each other on the ice. So that's all you can ask for, really. You can uh, just coming into a team that everyone gets on with everyone. There's there's no there's no hassle when it comes to the room. Everyone's joking around. It's a it's a nice light-hearted uh, atmosphere. So yeah. Ben Davies. Um, obviously, you know I've uh, been watching Ben over a long time, and uh, I just like how he plays. Um, he's a smaller smaller guy, but he plays uh, hard every shift. And he goes to the areas uh, where a lot of bigger guys don't even go to. He uses his speed really well. Um, and he certainly, you know, he gets under team skin as well, how he plays. Um, but that's why, obviously, he goes to those areas. You know, he's not, a, he's not afraid to take the puck to the net. He's not afraid to cut in on defensemen. And uh, he's got great speed and great work ethic. Um, that's his uh, strongest points. But uh, Ben's a, he's a pleasure to coach. Yeah, Ben's, Ben's a really good player for us. He uh, brings a lot of energy to our to our game, to our dressing room in general, and uh, he's, you know, I'd say he's one of the faster players in the league when he gets winding up with the puck, and uh, he can kind of make something happen out of, out of nowhere sometimes. He'll just start with it in his own zone and carry it all the way in and, and make something happen, and uh, 
probably draws more penalties than than the average player. Like he's out there and these guys are trying to, you know, slow him down, and he's always drawing a penalty, putting us on the power play. So um, he's useful in a lot of situations. Um, you know, plays the power play, plays the penalty kill, uh, even strength. Like we we can rely on him. So he's really good in that way. And then um, the guys always. Love, love him in the dressing room. He likes to joke around, and we like joking around with him. So, um, I've personally had the opportunity to play with him here, and we we played in Australia together, and uh, so I got to know him quite a bit off the ice as well. And uh, you know, he's a great team player, good guy to have around. Um, he keeps things light, so that's one thing we all really appreciate about Ben. Period one, and it takes just two minutes for the Flames to score, as they set the tone early when Jamie Crooks' slap shot puts them on the board. And just after 40 minutes of play, the Flames light the lamp again as Kaliakiad slots home their second of the night. Ben Davies then quickly validates his reputation and extends the lead to 3-0. But this game is far from over. The clan are an informed team at the minute, and they claw two goals back to make it 3-2. This game could now go either way, as the clan have pulled their goalie late in the third. Despite being under pressure, the Flames clear the zone and John Dunbar scores on an empty cage with 48 seconds from the buzzer to secure the win. The 17th of February 2019 is a date the Guildford Flames organisation and its fans will never forget, as this is the date in which they made history with their first ever Elite League trophy, thanks to a 1-0 win over the Manchester Storm which claimed them the Patton Conference title from the previous winners. A couple of weeks ago now we obviously played Manchester for the, the conference. And basically the conference, the league's split into three conferences and, and in ours is Manchester, Milton Keynes and, and Coventry. So there's some established teams, so it's it's huge for the us as a club to have uh, won that first one in the Elite League and, and to win it against Manchester as well, which was good because they, they they won the conference last year. So to take that out of their hands was, was a, a big big deal for us and obviously it was good set, well, well celebrated and Good to have the fans on board with that. Um... For number five in the Flames, this season is not over. With the Patton Conference title under their belt, the team is hungry for more. A top eight playoff spot for the Flames for the second season in a row is looming, with them closing in on a top four finish. Well, yeah, I think right now we got about eight games left maybe, and. I think we're sitting in fourth, so that's we're trying to finish as high as we can. Obviously, the the top two teams, Belfast and Cardiff, are a little ahead of everyone else. So I, I don't think um, we're going to end up finishing seventh or eighth and playing one of those. So we're going to end up hopefully finishing third or fourth by the looks of it, and uh, we we put ourselves in a good position then to play fifth or sixth, and uh, it's a two-game series. So we play home, 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 home and away, and obviously it's an aggregate score, and hopefully we get through. Like last year, we were a little unlucky against Sheffield. I think uh, if you ask everyone who was on the team last year, we 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 nearly done enough to get through. And if you get to Nottingham, again, it's uh, it's a hell of an occasion. Playoffs, uh, semi-finals, and in the final, you got that the ten or eleven teams, fans all, all around there cheering, picking a team, and. So hopefully, hopefully we can uh, push on here the last eight games and get as high position as we can. And I think whoever we match up against, we're gonna we're gonna give them a good goal come playoffs. So. Internationally, this season Davies will face the biggest challenge of his career as part of Team GB. Davies was part of the GB team that won gold and promotion to Pool A in Budapest. But first of all, it was it was surreal a little bit, I guess. Like we're, we're going into that tournament as sixth seed, so we're going in out of six. Um, 
we got some some big teams there like uh, Slovakia, uh, Slovakia, Slovenia, Italy, uh, Hungary, or Kazakhstan. All teams are, have got some well-established players. So yeah, we were going in and, and first of all we we we, we come off two warm-up games, and they they the warm-up games didn't really pan out as as we hoped, but we knew we had a a great team. So we we we. Started the first game, I think we played Slovenia, and they'd obviously just come out of a, a big run in the Olympics, and they'd done quite well. And we ended up beating them. Um, we ended up turning it over, and then just just rolling from there. We had some uh, good results against some big teams, and and they come through to the last game, and we were top of the table. We were in uh, medal contention. I think we were worst we were going to get was maybe bronze, but it just so happened that we could still. We needed a draw or a bet to win, and uh, it came down to the last 20 seconds, and and we ended up taking it to overtime for a draw. And uh, yeah, I think it's one of one of my what well, it's definitely my favourite hockey memory. It was uh, unbelievable, obviously being six seed, and then we ended up winning gold and, and promotion to the to the top division. So we're playing the likes of uh, Canada and America and Finland and the superstars next year. So. Well, in a couple months. GB are now in Pool A, and he faces off against the world's biggest superstars, Canada, USA, Finland, Germany, host Slovakia, Denmark, and France. It's gonna be maybe maybe a once in a lifetime for GB. Like the last time they were in the top division, I think was '94, and uh, yeah, obviously no one in in this current GB team was playing then, so. We'll see. Uh, it's going to be a hell of an uh, achievement. Hopefully, I can make that team and, and get on my get on the plane to Slovakia and and play in a once in a lifetime maybe a opportunity to, to play against some of my my uh, superstars that I just watch day in day out on uh, the TV. So yeah. At 28 years old, with a key role on a playoff-bound team, on the hunt for more silverware, the future couldn't be brighter for him. One that will have expectation, possibility, and no doubt, plenty of scoring opportunities at the World Championship. 